Welcome everyone to another YouTube video. I'm Patrick Ward. I started working on cars at eight years old with my dad. My passion is cars, saving money, and helping others. I've saved myself thousands of dollars with my own car repairs. In this channel, I'll show you simple to follow steps to fix your own car. With that, come with me. Let's get it done. Today we're going to work on the 2006 Honda CRV. Now a couple days ago this car turned on the check engine light. So I went and found the scan for it and found the error codes. I'm going to show you what those are. We're going to fix this and uh, show you how to do it. So let me just tell you a little bit about the car. So I bought this car about eight months ago. It's a single owner. I purchased it from the original owner and they took really good care of it except for the paint. Here's the report from the check engine code scan. You can see I'm throwing a P0661 and a P2646. So we've got two different parts in here. This one is from AutoZone slash O'Reilly's. It's by Dorman. You can see the part number on there and I'll put a link to this in the YouTube description. I bought one from the dealer. It was $5.40. Let's open that up so we can see it. And we'll make a comparison with the Dorman. And essentially they are the same. And for a dollar difference, uh, whatever is more convenient is the one that I would do. So the dealer is the one on the left and the Dorman is the one on the right. So I have two Honda CRVs, so I'll put this one on my 2007 and this one's going to go on my 2006. I cross-referenced both part numbers, or the same part number for both models, the 2006 CRV and the 2007 CRV. They were the same, which is good, because that makes it easy, because the engine is the same as well. So, with that, let's get this thing going! The tools to do this job are going to be extremely easy. We'll need a 10 millimeter wrench, a ratchet, 3 8 inch drive, a 10 millimeter socket. You can do shallow well or deep well, and maybe an extension. Okay, first we're going to start by putting on the gloves, because what lady likes her man to have dirty hands? No. And this is the part we're going to replace. This is a heat shield that goes over it, and the part we actually need is where these two things are plugged in right here. So just to give you a reference where this is, we're on the passenger side of the vehicle, on the back side of the engine. This right here is the exhaust manifold heat shield, and this is the um, air conditioner uh, line. So it's directly below the air conditioner line. Now also, I've noted this in the um, video title, but this is the same on the 2006 and 2007. There's a bolt right there. That's a 10 millimeter and it's a very shallow bolt. It holds this heat shield on and we need to take that out. Now that's the easy one. There are three other bolts behind and underneath here and you're gonna have to feel it with your hand. And they're about an inch and a half to two inches long. And when those come out, then this whole thing will come free. And then we're gonna take out this electrical connection here and then there's another one back here that you can't see very well right there. So. This is a really simple process. It should not take more than about 10 minutes. I forgot to mention one important tool, and that is a moving blanket from Harbor Freight, because you're gonna be leaning over the top of your engine, and if you've just turned your engine off, it's gonna be a little warm. It also is a nice place to keep your tools. Okay, so I've got my 10 millimeter, and I'm going to take out this bolt right here. This, and it's not, now you won't be able to do it all the way with the, with the box end because you're going to take it out a little ways and then pretty soon the bolt head is going to get in the way of the heat shield. And since you don't need to take the heat shield off, you're going to do the rest of it after this with the open end side. And then from there you can just do it with your hand. Now I'm using the open end side and doing the alternation right side not right side left side but what do you call it when you flip a wrench over front side back side oh. don't drop this bolt but if you do it's not always lost you can just find it and usually they go to the exact underside in the middle of the car there's the bolt put your bolt someplace where you will not accidentally brush it and have it go someplace that you can't find 
Okay, there are the three bolts we're going to replace. So there's one on top of another, and then there's one that's close to the exhaust manifold. So sear that into your brain, <laughs> and then memorize it, and then we're going to go from here by feel only. I opted to use my 10 millimeter deep well instead of my shallow well with an extension. So I remember that there's one next to the exhaust manifold. I'm going to do that close one first. And these shouldn't be more than about, I don't know, maybe 10 foot-pounds. They're not very much. 10 foot-pounds. Maybe I didn't have it. Okay, there we go. And I've either just cut myself, and I have a whole bunch of cool blood running down my finger, or I cut my gloves, and I'm getting some... I'm getting some air conditioning. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm going to go for the other. And make sure that your socket is seated square on the nut head. Otherwise, you're going to twist it off. And then you're going to be in trouble. So, ounce of prevention. Seven pounds of cure. Or is it eight pounds? Okay. So that was the bottom one. Now I'm going to go by feel because I remember it's right above. I've got my finger on it. I'm going to push that little wire out of the way. Come on. There it is. Now, take a look. You can see that everything is moving. See that movement? There we go. So I know I've got all of my bolts loose. Now I'm just going to take them out by hand. Okay, here's bolt one. Bolt two, you can might be able to see is sticking out right there. So I'm going to pull that one out. Okay, number three is out. Now we're going to pull this up, and we're going to turn it like that. Now, disconnect the two connections. That's super easy to do. There's a tab. One. And you don't have to worry about which one goes where because one's round and one's square. And if you can put a round hole and a square peg together, then you need to work for NASA. Come on. Get that top one right there and push it in and it comes out. And now your cable ties are going to keep your heat shield in place, so you don't need to worry about that. Okay, I've got the circuit out, the valve. This is the problem. I've got it out. Here's where the three bolts came out. And there's the old gasket O-ring with the screen in it. To get this out, you can use any number of things. I'm going to use one of my picks to get that out. So what you do is you're going to stick it someplace where you can get it under there. And I'm going to go right there in the middle. Put it down and give it a pull. And it should just come right out. If you've got fingernails, that might work. Pull it out, and you can see that's still kind of soft, but it's flat. So we're going to put a new one in it. Now, we'll also want to clean the inside of that a little bit. So let's take our rag. And you want to do a rag that doesn't have a lot of lint, so probably not a terry cloth, because there's a valve in there that you don't want to get stuff in it. Okay, now if your valve is, let's see if we can hold it where you can see on the inside of it. If your valve is at all dirty, you might want to clean it with some carburetor cleaner or something, but that looks really clean, so I'm not going to worry about it. You'll notice the one on the left is the old one. It's dirty, the screen is clogged, and the one on the right is clean and new. So it doesn't take a lot of dirt or contamination to clog up that screen so you could probably clean the screen and if you're in a pinch sure that'll work um, but you can tell from the difference in thickness and the, just the way they look between this one and that one even on the video this one looks flat and this one is round so when you put those on this is going to compress a little bit and that will give you your oil seal so eventually these will start to leak. 
but you've probably got so my car has 200,000 miles on it and it hasn't leaked yet but my screen here did get clogged this is the o-ring that I got from AutoZone not the dealer and we're gonna just push it in and it'll stay in there really well so it's a good fit that's not as I turn it sideways you can see that's not gonna come out so I have no fear in putting it in that it's gonna be a problem so let's get this thing put in now and get the car running we're ready for the next step this is the heat shield and I am going to put this back in that heat shield and then I'm going to hook up the the wires that go to it so first the wires one push it till it clicks now we're going to put this inside of here like so the first thing to do is to lightly seat the short bolt because once you get those other bolts in you can't get this in so we're going to turn this a little bit and line that up where I've got lots of room and I'm going to just start it if I can find it right there. Okay, I've got it in three turns. Now I have the little short bolt turned in by three turns. Not tight, just enough that it's seated or that's not even seated it's just started so let's get one of our one of our bolts and get it in remember how I said never drop your bolts while you're working on the car well I just did that one of the things I neglected to mention is make sure your cardboard is centered underneath where you're working. So I was off by about two inches, so I get to clean up a mess afterward now. But thankfully, my bolt and my tire is parked on it, so it's not going to be moving. I'll leave it there for now, I guess. And there's my bolt. Now I'm going to have to clean it. I'm going to start with the one closest to the exhaust manifold and I've got it right through the valve body as well and with everything held roughly where it goes that was really easy. I don't think anything has ever been that easy that I've worked on before. Okay, feel with your hand. you got to have your second arm down there. And there's the bottom hole right there. Turn it in a couple times. I'm going to use my 10 millimeter deep well socket and get those things started or seated. And I'm going to do it just till it snugs, which is there. That's one. The lighting may not be great, but my hands are really tight here. So one, two, and three. Okay. Those are all hand tighted, seated. Now we're going to do a critical next step. Your check engine light would have come on, so we're going to reset that code the easy way. Now be aware, when you do it this way, you are going to clear out the memory on your radio. You'll actually put it into lock mode, and you'll have to know that security code. I'm going to just disconnect that, and leave it disconnected while I finish the rest of the process. And then when I'm done with it and I come back and reconnect it, then the codes will all be cleared out. We're going to tighten the three bolts now. And 
and again we we'll tighten them just till they get a little snug and then we do the next one. We're going to alternate on all three of them and we're going to slowly or methodically tighten each one in turn. One, two, and three. By the time you're done with this, you're gonna know this bolt pattern like the back of your hand. Okay, I've done the third one. I'm gonna go back to the first one again. And it's right there. Tighten it down. And if you're not familiar with how tight to do these, do not crank on them. Because you're if you do, you're gonna strip them. They only need to be maybe just just a little okay that one I think is good and you can tell I'm not putting a lot of force on these I've seen people who are working on their car and they think everything has to be really tight and they end up stripping stuff so be wise now the last one I have is the heat shield and that's just going to take some perseverance because it's not in a very convenient location. So you can stick around if you want. Okay, we're done. Now let's connect the battery and start it and make sure that we don't have any oil leaks and the check engine light is out. All right, that's connected. Let's get this thing started. Here we go. The check engine light went out before the engine was actually running. Let's go check for oil leaks. Everything looks good. Right here. But there is no oil leaks. We're gonna shine the light underneath the car as well. Okay, so you can see our oil leak from before when I misplaced the cardboard box. But with the oil pressure that's going through the engine, if there were a leak, you'd know it, and you'd be all concerned. So we're good. Don't forget in this channel, you're gonna learn how to fix your car and save a lot of money. Also, you're gonna have a great sense of accomplishment when you're all done, knowing that you did something that is a little bit challenging. Congratulations, you made it through, and we'll see you on our next video.